Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu, Pax Wobiskum. Peace be unto you, uh, Maranatha. This is uh, my previous video. I did a prayer uh, just to get in the right mindset, uh, the right mindset to do this video because uh, I've been meditating and uh, just meditating about what's been going on and listening to the coverage, watching the videos, reading updates, and this is escalating and escalating. I think it's uh, it's safe to say this is a war. It's not going to end next week or next month. It's going to be ongoing until there's some kind of uh, large enough event that puts an end to it. Uh, this could be what the Prophet spoke of, where I, I see it going into different directions, okay? Um, number one direction, it could be to where the third temple is eventually built, and then the two witnesses appear and so on. Uh, and then you have the seven years where three and a half years where Israel is allowed to make sacrifices and offerings, and then the sacrifices and offerings are put to an end. And then you have the three and a half years of Jacob's trouble. So I was going to make this video title it Jacob's Trouble, but that's clickbait, and that's not true. Because Jake, Jacob's Trouble is really the last three and a half years of the se the last seven-year period before the return of Mashiach. So <laughs> that's not what is happening right now. It, it is hor horrendous. It's, it's barbaric. It's just... I don't have the words to... Besides what I've said, it's tragic. It's just monstrous and horrific what is happening right now in Israel. Um, you know, a lot of people will take both sides. They'll say, oh, I side with Palestine and Israel, or I side with only pa Palestine or Israel. Uh, this video, I'm not going to so much <laughs> take sides about that. I'm just going to express what I've been uh, reading about and what I've been reading about, uh, not only in the news updates, but also in scripture, as you can see the scripture open right now. So I see it going one of two ways. Again, as I expressed, the first possibility is where, <coughs> excuse me, Third Temple is eventually rebuilt, and we're just getting into high gear with all the events of what the prophets wrote of, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and so on, and Zechariah. And you even have uh, what the book of Revelation describes going into full gear. Or the second option is Israel goes into captivity for an extended period, period of time. We don't know how long, but that's what is also prophesied, uh, which seems to actually make sense thinking about it now because if it's really the last seven years uh, are they going to only be in captivity for three and a half years it's hard to say I or I really don't know we, we don't know the step-by-step -step way that God is going to do things so I'm just going to read um, before I read these uh, these verses that have uh, lined up for you uh, in Jeremiah and Daniel, I'm going to express my my uh, I don't know how to put it right now, but um, I do pray for Israel. All those who whose lives have been taken, whose lives are at the brink of being taken out, being snuffed out untimely, whether they're children young women, families, you know, mothers, fathers, young men, the soldiers themselves of the IDF, and even uh, senior citizens and even Holocaust survivors who lived through that hell. Now they're going through another different uh, hell towards the end of their lives. Uh, my heart goes out to them, uh, suffering in any way, shape, or form. Uh, when we see those suffering of any nation, we should empathize with them. We should uh, mourn with them. If they're mourning, we should mourn with them. 
we should pray for Israel. And I know this is going to be hard to hear, but we should also pray for Palestine. <laughs> we should pray for those who are persecuting Israel. It sounds counter, you know, like a weird oxymoron, but we're we're told to pray for our enemies. And, and so I, while I do pray for Israel and for the people of Israel who are going through tremendous suffering and and being hunted down, persecuted, not even persecuted, really murdered and uh, raped and so on, abducted, held hostage, th their life is in the balance. I also pray for the enemies of Israel. Why? I pray that Adonai would open their eyes and repent of what they're doing, that they would be kind to those who they've kidnapped, that they would show mercy to their hostages, that, that they would see the truth about Islam, that they would be led to Yeshua, that they would repent. Because, to be honest, a lot of them don't even know what they're doing and, or why they're doing it. I believe they're just pawns in this big chessboard, and Adonai is moving the pieces ahead to fulfill his plan. Yes, they have accountability. Everyone does for what they say and do. But ultimately, who's in control of everything? Adonai is. And so I'm going to read the verses now. Um, <clears throat> so Jeremiah 44, verse 2. This is this seems to be the beginning of the birth pangs. Um, but this, seem, this seems to be talking of a time yet ahead when things are more escalated where Israel is in captivity or taken into captivity and, and perhaps this is speaking of Jacob's trouble but in any case we're going to read it just so we understand the the why of, of why Israel goes through these periods of uh, being uh, of, of being attacked sorry about that of being attacked <clears throat> so Jeremiah 44 verse 2 thus has Adonai Elohim of Israel said, You have seen all the evils which I have brought upon Jerusalem, upon the cities of Yehuda, and behold, they are desolate without inhabitants. Is that where we're going to? At the beginning of this, uh, just from yesterday, is that what is going to be the end result after all the dust settles? Why? Why did, were they desolate? <clears throat> because of their wickedness, which they have wrought, which they have worked, to provoke me by going to burn incense to other Elohim, whom you knew not. Yet I sent to you my servants, the prophets, early in the morning, and I sent, saying, Do not you, or you don't do this, basically, don't do this, you, you don't do this abom abominable thing which I hate. So this is like a Hebraic uh, sentence structure. Do not you. So you don't, you do not do this abominable thing which I hate, which is to burn incense to other Elohim. But they hearken not to me, and inclined not their ear to turn from their wickedness, so as not to burn incense, incense to strange Elohim. So mine anger and my wrath dropped upon them and was kindled in the gates of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a desolation and a waste as at this day. And now thus has Adonai Almighty said, Why do you commit these great evils against your souls to cut off man and woman of you, infant and suckling from the middle of Yehuda to the end, that not one of you should be left? So they're, in this text anyway, they're committing evil against themselves. By provoking me with the works of your hands to burn incense to other Elohim in the land of Mitzrayim, into which you entered to dwell there, that you might be cut off, and that you might become a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the sins of your fathers and the sins of the kings of Yehuda and the sins of your princes, and the sins of your wives which they worked in the land of Yehuda, and in the streets of Yerushalayim. They, and have not ceased even to this day. They have not kept to my ordinances which I set before their fathers. Therefore thus says Adonai, Behold, I do set my face against you to destroy all the remnant that are in Mizraim. So these are the remnant of Israel that were living in Egypt. 
and they shall fall by the sword. So not destroy all of Israel. So this can be misinterpreted uh, in the Masoretic that he's cutting off all of Judah and all of Israel. No, he's just only those living in Egypt uh, at that time. They shall fall by the sword, by famine, shall be consumed, small and great. They shall be for a reproach uh, and for destruction and for a curse. And I will visit them that dwell in the land of Mizraim, as I visited Jerusalem with sword and with famine. There shall not one be preserved of the remnant of Yehuda that sojourn in the land of Mizraim. So that you should underline that, really. So that's not all of Judah. It's only those who live in Egypt at that time. To return uh, to return to the land of Yehuda. So there's not going to be one that will return to Yehuda, to Judah, to which they hope in their hearts to return. They shall not return, but only they that escape. So only those that escape will return. <coughs> then all the men that knew their wives. Okay, so this is, uh, so you can see, that that is one of the reasons why Israel goes through the cycles of chastisements and then being restored to the land. But this could be the final one, what we are going through right now. Uh, what we are seeing, what we are witnessing in 2023. So I'm going to go to Daniel 9 now. In the first year of Daresh in, in the Persian, uh, Farsi, I believe it's Daresh, the son of uh, Asuras of the seed of the Medes, who reigned over the kingdom of the Chaldeans. I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years, which was the word of Adonai to the prophet Yeremiahu. Seventy years for the accomplishment of the, the destruction or the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face toward Elohim, uh, Adonai Elohim, to seek him diligently by prayer and supplications with fastings and sackcloth. And I prayed to Adonai my Elohim and confessed and said, O Adonai, the great and wonderful Adon, uh, Elohim, keeping your, keeping your covenant and your mercy to them that love you and to them that keep your commandments, we have we have sinned. So Daniel is saying, as as a people, Israel, we have sinned. We have done iniquity. We have transgressed. We have departed and turned aside from your commandments and from your judgments. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O Adonai, belongs righteousness, and to us belongs confusion of face, as at this day. To the men of Yehuda, to the dwellers in Yerushalayim, to all Israel, to them that are near, to them that are far off in all the earth, wherever you have scattered them for the sin which they committed. So why is Israel scattered? Or why do they get scattered in a diaspora time to time? Why are they put into captivity for the sin, the sins which they committed? In you, O Adonai, is our righteousness, and to us, confusion of face, and to our kings, and to our princes, to our fathers, for as much as we have sinned. To you, Adonai, or Elohim, belong compassions and forgivenesses, Whereas we have departed from you, neither have we listened to the voice of Adonai or Elohim to walk in his laws, which he set before us by the hands of his servants, the prophets. So we, we didn't walk in his Torah, in his commandments. Moreover, all Israel have transgressed your, your Torah and have refused to listen to your voice. Remember what Moses said, I'm going to send you one like me, that comes after me. You listen to him. And those who don't listen to him, vengeance. I don't know, I will have vengeance upon them. Did they listen to Yeshua? So the curse has come upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moshe, the servant of Elohim, because we have sinned against him. And he has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us great evils, such as have not happened under the whole heaven, according to what has happened in Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moshe, all these evils have come upon us. Yet we have not besought Adonai our Elohim, 
that we might turn away from our iniquities. So that's part of the proper procedure. That's what we should be doing, is to turn away from our iniquities. We should repent, teshuva, and then have understanding in all your truth. Adonai has also watched and brought the evils upon us. For Adonai, our Elohim, is righteous in all his work, which he has executed, but we have not listened to his voice. And now, O Adonai, our Elohim, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made to yourself a name, as at this day. We have sinned. We have transgressed. I am part of that. I'm not excluding myself from that. We have all sinned. We have transgressed Adonai. Physical Israel and those who have been adopted into Israel. O Adonai, your mercy is over all. Let, I pray you, your wrath, let your wrath turn away in your anger. Turn away your anger from the city, your city, Jerusalem, even your holy mountain, Zion. For we have sinned, and because of our iniquities and those of our fathers, Yerushalayim, and your people are become a reproach among all that are round about us. And now, O Adonai, our Elohim, listen to our prayer. Listen to the, to the prayer of your servant and his supplications and cause your face to shine on your desolate sanctuary for your own sake, O Adonai. And that sanctuary does not exist on earth right now in a physical way. Incline your ear, O my Elohim, and hear. Open your eyes and behold our desolation and that of your city on which your name is called. For we do not bring our pitiful case before you on the ground of our righteousness. So I just want to bring up that uh, the state of Israel right now is nowhere close to what Daniel was seeing. That it really was desolate. Their, their city was demolished. The temple was you know, in a bad state. But anyway... Continuing on, we do not bring our pitiful case before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your manifold compassions, O Adonai. Listen, O Adonai, be propitious. O Adonai, attend. O Adonai, delay not. O my Elohim, for your own sake, for your name is called upon your city upon your people. So, as much as I uh, open this video saying we, we should pray for Israel and those suffering, those innocent, caught in the crossfire of war, um, we, I also pray for the enemies of Israel as well, that, uh, that Adonai would turn them away, uh, from their sins, and, and he would also open their eyes to the truth about him, that he is the true Elohim, and that they would have mercy on their captors and, and those who they take hostage Because they really don't know what they're doing. They, they don't see that they're being used as pawns by Satan. But ultimately Adonai is working his plan ahead. Pushing his plan forward. So, um, And we can see the reasons why these things happen. These, these are chastisements that are happening to Israel. But not chastisements. I don't want this video to be misunderstood that Israel is being punished. In order to be destroyed, that's that is not what is happening. Because, as Adonai promised, Israel will remain a nation before Him, as long as the the moon and the sun exist in the sky. And uh, you know what? Let me just look that up for you, just so you don't 
believe everything I say. Okay, so uh, Jeremiah 31 is what I was looking for. I'm going to read it in its entirety because it, it is so powerful. At that time, says Adonai, I will be an Elohim to the family of Israel, and they shall be to me a people. Thus says Adonai, I found him warm in the wilderness with them that were slain with the sword. Go you and destroy not Israel. Adonai appeared to him from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore have I drawn you in compassion. For I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin of Israel. You shall yet take your timbrel and go forth with the party of them that make merry. For you have planted vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. You plant and praise. For it is a day when those that plead on the mountains of Ephraim shall call, saying, Arise you and go up to Zion, to the Lord our God, your God. For thus says Adonai to Jacob, You rejoice and exult over the head of the nations. Make proclamation and praise you. Say, Adonai has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. So this is yet to be fulfilled. Behold, I bring them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of the Passover. So who's bringing them? Is it U.S.? Is it the IDF? No, I, Adonai, will bring them to the feast of the pa he, he never forget his people. He'll never, ever will. And the people shall beget a great multitude. They shall return here. They went forth with weeping, so they left crying, but I will bring them back, uh, and I will bring them back with consolation, causing them to lodge by the channels of waters in a straight way, and they shall not err in it, for I am become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the words of Adonai, you nations, and proclaim them to the islands afar off. Say, he that scattered Israel will also gather him and keep him as one that feeds his flock. So it seems to be what I said at the outset that this could be one of two scenarios. That Israel will build the third temple. This will lead to them building the third temple, getting permission to do that. Or secondly, they will be scattered as a sort of diaspora. Not a sort of, but an actual diaspora being scattered. He that scattered Israel will also gather him. So who's scattering Israel? Is it the, is it the Khalifa? Is it the, all of the Muslim nations united? The Islamic nations? No. It's Adonai himself. He scattered them. He's using the enemies of Israel to scatter him. And he's going to gather him again and keep him as one that feeds his flock. For Adonai has ransomed Jacob. He has rescued him out of the hand of them that were stronger than he. Who's stronger than Israel? Well, if you unite all the countries that are against Israel, they are stronger than Israel. You take Turkey, you take Iran, you take uh, Egypt, or you just take all the, you know, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, I'm not saying they're all going to be on one side. I'm saying that if they all unite, hypothetically, they are stronger than Israel. Just Turkey and Iran alone probably is. Um... <clears throat> Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Libya, Sudan, right? And they shall come and shall rejoice in the Mount of Zion and shall come to the good things of Adonai, even to a land of corn or barley, you should say, a land of barley, wine, fruits, cattle, sheep. Their soul shall be as a fruit tree. They shall hunger no more. Then shall the virgins rejoice in the assembly of youth the old men shall rejoice. I will turn their mourning into joy and will make them merry. These are promises. They're not simply flowery words trying to give comfort in times like these. These are promises. This is going to happen. It's speaking of future events that will take place and are just as real as, actually even more real than our reality today in, in a lot of ways. So these are the very words of Adonai. I will expand and cheer with wine the soul of the priests the sons of Levi. 
and my people shall be satisfied with my good things, thus says Adonai. A voice was heard in Ramah of lamentation and of weeping and wailing. Rachel would not cease weeping for her children because they are not. So Rachel's children were not. Thus says Adonai, let your voice cease from weeping and your ears, I should say your eyes, from your tears. For there is a reward for your works and they shall return from the land of enemies. So not one enemy, multiple enemies. There shall be an abiding home for your children. I have heard the sound of Ephraim lamenting and saying, You have chastened me, and I was chastened. I, as a calf, was not taught. Turn you, me, and I shall turn for you, Adonai, my Elohim. For after my captivity I repented, and after I knew, I groaned for the day of shame and showed you that I bore reproach from my youth. Ephraim is a beloved son, a pleasing child to me. For because my words are in him, I will surely remember him. Therefore I made haste to help him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith Adonai. Prepare yourself, O Zion, execute vengeance, look to your ways, return, O Virgin of Israel, by the way by which you went, returning, return mourning to your cities. How long, O disgraced daughter, will thou turn away? For Adonai has created safety for a new plantation. Men shall go about in safety. <clears throat> for thus saith Adonai, they shall yet speak this word in the land of Yehuda. And in the cities thereof, when I shall turn his captivity, blessed be Adonai on his righteous holy mountain. And there shall be dwellers in the cities of Yehuda and in all his land, together with the husbandmen. And the shepherd shall go forth with the flock. For I have saturated every thirsting soul and filled every hungry soul. Therefore I awake and beheld, and my sleep was sweet to me. Okay, this is uh, Jeremiah saying, I, I woke up, and my sleep was sweet. So he had a really good rest. <clears throat> Therefore, behold, the days come, say, saith Adonai, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of man, and the seed of beast, I don't even know how to interpret that right now. Especially this part, seed of beast, I don't... Anyway, and it shall come to pass that as I watched over them to pull down and to afflict, which is what's happening now, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith Adonai. In those days they shall certainly not say, the, the fathers ate a sour grape, and the children's teeth were set on edge. But every one shall die in his own sin, and the teeth of him that eats the sour grape shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, says Adonai, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Yehuda, not according to the covenant which I made with their fathers in the day when I took hold of their hand to bring them out of the land of Mizraim. For they abode not in my covenant, and I disregarded them, saith Adonai. For this is my covenant, which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Adonai. I will surely put my laws into their mind. So it's not a maybe, it, it's a guarantee. I will surely put my laws, laws, plural, into their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be to them an Elohim and they shall be to me 
a people. They shall not at all teach everyone his citizen and everyone his brother, saying, No Adonai. For all, for all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their iniquities and their sins. I will remember no more. Thus saith Adonai, who gives the sun for light by day, the moon and the stars for light by night, and makes a roaring in the sea, so that the waves thereof roar. Adonai Almighty is his name. If these ordinances cease from before me, the sun and the moon and the stars, then shall the family of Israel cease to be a nation before me forever. So I read all that, chapter 31, just to get to here. Israel is not being chastised or suffering right now in order to be destroyed. God forbid, heaven forbid. They shall remain a remnant of Israel as long as the sun and the moon and the stars exist. Though the sky should be raised to a greater height, says Adonai, and though the ground of the earth should be sunk lower beneath, yet I will not, I will not cast off the family of Israel, says Adonai, for all that they have done. Yes, they have sinned, but they will not be cast off. Behold, the days come, says Adonai, when the city shall be built to Adonai from the tower of Hananil to the gate of the corner, and the measurement of it shall proceed in front of them as far as the hills of Gareb, and it shall be compassed with a circular wall of choice stones. And all the Asaramot, even to Nachal Kidron, as far as the corner of the horse gate eastward, shall be holiness to Adonai, set apart. It shall not fail any more, and it shall not be destroyed forever. So in closing, I know this is a long video. Uh, maybe I might stop it and make a third video. Probably will do that. So thank you for your uh, time and attention. Uh, Till next time, Shalom Aleichem, Assalamu Alaikum, Irini Mazisu Pax Obiskum. Peace be unto, peace be unto you, Maranatha. Oh, actually, before I end the video, I want to say uh, something about praying for Israel. Given all that I've read in this video, and even the previous video where I read the Mita, how are we to pray? I just answered it earlier. I prayed for Israel in terms of, you know, that they would repent, that they would turn from their sins, that they... Uh, those innocent would be spared. That I uh, pray for the enemies of Israel too, because they don't know what they're doing, and that I don't know I would give them a merciful heart to their captors, to those who they've taken captive, that they would repent and would be given a chance to uh, to know Yeshua as well, whether in this life or in the next, and they would see that what they've done. They were used as tools of Satan. The, but, the, but they were used for, as instruments to carry out the plan of Elohim as well, unbeknownst to them. So, But everyone's accountable for their words and actions. So, uh, <clears throat> And lastly, I want to pray, ultimately, as I prayed uh, in the previous video, that Adonai's will be done. I, I, that's the most important thing. That His will be done in our lives, in the whole world, and especially right now in Israel and Jerusalem and the Jewish people, that, that Adonai will not forget them, that he would, s that I know he would keep his promises, I, I'm not worried about that, I know he's true to his words, that he, he will fulfill his promises, he made a covenant with Abraham, and 
if he would not live up to his part, then let him, essentially you said, let me become like one of these animals that are ripped in two. And uh, he keeps his promises, he keeps his covenant, he's faithful forever to Israel. So I pray that his will be done. And uh, that might mean something horrible happening, which seems to be alluding to a captivity, a period of time where Israel will no longer be a nation, which is uh, doesn't really make sense at this moment in time, right? Because you know, from 1948 to now, 2023, it's roughly 75 years in Israel, seems like, well, what was the point then that Israel got the land back in 1948, only to be dispersed again? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Again, it could be one of two scenarios. It could be one, they're going to build a temple again, or two, they're going to go back in diaspora and then return. Okay, you know what? could be a third option. <laughs> but I'm thinking, okay, if 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 they are allowed to build the third temple by some by some uh, circumstance that we just don't see at this moment, and then they're able to sacrifice and so on, the temple is rebuilt, you know, so they can sacrifice, the Levites are reinstituted, the Sanhedrin is reinstituted. But then you also have the, the caliphate, the Islamic caliphate will also rise up, if not before then, and then you have the Antichrist appearing on the scene, you have the two witnesses appearing on the scene, so everything is just being uh, really very much uh, un un unfolding before our eyes. Will that happen in the next you know, 10, 20 years, 30, 40 years from now? I don't know. We don't, we're not given uh, that knowledge. We can, we can know the season to some degree. Uh, but is that first scenario, like I said, the rebuilding of the temple, is that what this is leading to? That the temple is going to be rebuilt, that Israel will take over the Temple Mount and they'll be free to pray on it and worship on it and you know, eventually build that, lay the cornerstone of the temple and so on. Or, scenario two, are they going to captivity? Because if, if that happens, like, how does that make sense? Okay, so let's say they go into captivity, all right? So how are they going to be rescued? Well, it's going to be Adonai himself rescuing them, isn't it? So if Adonai rescues them, and then they rebuild the temple and so on, then the Antichrist appears. Doesn't, see, it doesn't really make sense, that second scenario to me anymore. Because if Antichrist appears and Adonai's here, then it's going to be like a you know one-on-one -on -one war. <laughs> you see, Adonai... Whereas... The first scenario makes more sense, to be honest, that this is leading towards the first, te uh, third temple being built because uh, Yeshua is supposed to appear from heaven after the Antichrist is revealed, not before. See what I mean? So, unless scenario two is somewhat modified, let me explain. So, let's say Israel is taken to captivity throughout all the Muslim nations, you know, Yemen, Turkey, Iran, so on, etc. They're just spread out throughout the earth again, as they were before 1948. And then a portion of them is allowed to return to the land for through whatever circumstances. Maybe it's a merciful caliph, the khalifa, kilafa, whatever, the, the leader of the Islamic Caliphate says, okay, you know, let's let them go to their land, just a portion of them, not all of them. And they rebuild the temple, they're allowed to do sacrifices, the Levites and so on. And uh, then the sacrifices are put to an end, but but throughout all this, all these events where the third temple is rebuilt, a lot of Israel is still in captivity, remains in captivity. Not Not everyone is freed, Right, so that's a possible modification to Plan B or Plan Two, or Scenario Two, but Scenario One, 
it's just what's happening now, and then the third temple's rebuilt as part of the aftermath of all this this war developing, and then uh, in the middle of the three and a half years, you have the end of the sacrifices, and then you have Jacob's trouble where in those three and a half years, they're put into captivity, but it's only for three and a half years. It just doesn't seem like a long time, and then they're rescued from it. So, you know what? I, I really don't know. That That is a tough one. Um. So it's three and a half years enough time for people to say, oh, they've become a reproach and, you know, they've suffered for, what, three and a half years. Or scenario B or two could be a longer time because we're, we're only in, depending on whatever calendar you're looking at, between 5,700 years after uh, Yeshua or 5,800 years. Uh, oh, no, not after Yeshua. I mean, since the creation of Adam because it's only been 2,023 uh, years, give or take, since that time. So that would be 6,000 years, uh, which could be... Now again, <laughs> it could happen within the next, uh, let's see, 2044. It could be within the next 20 years where this, all these things happen. As soon as that, in the next two decades, or it could happen as long as, uh, or as far ahead as... Uh, 200 years from now, because uh, 5-7, uh, I don't know the exact year in the Jewish calendar, but 5-7, seven, seven, something like that. Let me, let me look it up in Google right now. But that would be... That would be really interesting if, if it's... Uh, if God, the Elohim is going to actually go by you know, 5 seven, eight, four, and say, okay, we have... Uh, 216 years to go. Okay, 216 years, or 200, around 100 to 2, between 100 to 200 years, because uh, I don't know if everything would start at the 6,000th year, or would all these things in Revelation and Daniel, all the prophets spoke about, would end at the 6,000th mark, the year 6,000 exactly to a T, or is it going to be more of a, you know, estimate, because, uh, you know, there's an individual, Joseph Dumond, who says that, in the Sighted Moon website, says, um, by the using the the millennial or jubilee calendar, uh, technically the 120 cycles of time that he, he uh, teaches, uh, 120 jubilee cycles, times 50, I think it's 50. Let's just do the math here. So, 120. 120 times 50. Oh, sorry, it's not 50, it's 49. Is 5880. And according to him, we're at the year 58. Uh, well, anyway, the five <laughs> year 5880, according to Joseph Dumond, is 2044. And so he, he might be right that by 2044, all these things might happen, uh, might start by then or might end by then. But it's really, time will tell whether it's going to be 5880 or 2044, or if it's going to be, uh, as the Jewish calendar reckons, 5784, which is the year right now. Okay, so if we add... Uh, 216 roughly to now we would be at the year oh hold on <laughs> 2023 plus 216 so by the year 2239 uh, all these things in Revelation will if they haven't started yet they'll be finished by then according to the Jewish calendar okay that's the Jewish calendar but by Joseph Dumont's uh Reckoning, which he's saying it's the year 5-8. Uh, you know what? Let me just go to his website really quick. Sighted Moon. Let's see what year he says it is. I believe it's 5-8, 5-8, something like that. So if we're going by his calendar and we're looking at the, the round, nice round number of of uh, 6,000, not, not his... Uh, 
uh, his reckoning of 120 Jubilee cycles. So 5859 is his reckoning. So if we look at 5859, we only have 141 years. Okay, 141 would be 6,000. So 141 years from now, 2023, we've got 2,164. So we have two different... We have three different benchmarks, to be honest. Okay, we've got... We've got what I just said, 2044, number one scenario. And then the previous one, the Jewish calendar, whatever year that was. And then we've got... Uh, this scenario 2164 but this is actually scenario uh, 2 because it's we're going in order so 2044 2164 or the other one whatever year <laughs> that was <laughs> can't remember right now um, okay what was it again so 2164 let's see uh, 5784 okay 5784 let's do the math just once again to get it clear in our minds 216 years from now, okay, there it is, so 216 plus 2023, so we have 2239 is the other possibility, or 2239, so will, they think, will these things happen? Yes, they're guaranteed from Adonai, they will happen, we just don't know when they will occur, okay, so that's all I have for you for this video, I, I wanted to get into the right mindset and the right heart condition to, to do this video, uh, because I know there's such a we're accountable for all our actions and our words, so I don't want to do this video in a hasty way and talk about these things in an unfeeling way. It's not just you know the presentation saying you know I have to. It's not about politics or just superficialities. It really is about matters of the heart and knowing that Adonai, how he sees these events, he's really the one in control of everything. He knows the emotions and the pain and suffering that. All people on earth go through, but especially Israel, his chosen people. So uh, with that, I'm going to close. Actually, I'm going to do a third video. So I'm going to close the video with that before I do a, the last video.